Morning travellers, Matt and I are heading to the Outer Reef today on one of the Quicksilver boats behind us. We're trying out some more snorkeling and seeing how different it is from Cairns. And uh, they've also got a pontoon out there with lots of other things to see and do. So let's go check it out. That's right folks, we are here in the lovely Port Douglas in North Queensland and we wanted to check out the difference between snorkeling off Cairns in comparison to snorkeling here in Port Douglas. We're also checking out the outer reef this time, which will take a little longer to get there. These Quicksilver wave piercing boats are massive and can hold so many people, I think over 400. It has three different levels and the top being outside. The difference between here and Green Island is we're actually going to the outer reef and stationing on a purpose built platform, pontoon actually, which is exclusive to Quicksilver. It's from here we'll collect our gear for snorkeling and keep ourselves entertained with everything else they have to offer, so stay tuned to find out everything. We booked our tickets online and checked in to the office beforehand. This is where they gave us a boarding pass and just lined up for the boat just after. These leave from the Crystal Brook Super Yacht Marina in Port Douglas. Things you need to bring with you would be a swimming costume, towel, hat, sunscreen, camera, or a phone, and a small amount of cash or a credit card as you can purchase souvenirs and stuff on board the boat. Angoncourt Reef is 72 kilometers off the coast of Port Douglas and takes about 90 minutes to get there. The ride was pretty good, but you still need to take your seasickness medication if you need it. Ensure this is taken before the boat leaves or start by taking them the night before. You need to keep yourself entertained on the ride out so they have a snorkeling video playing the whole time. A marine biologist might also tell you about the reef or you can just sit in the sun and catch some rays or maybe read a book. They will serve a small morning tea along with water and hot drinks like tea and coffee. There's also afternoon tea for the way home. A buffet lunch is also served on board and you can have this anytime between 11.30 and 1.30. Before too long, we were arriving at the pontoon and ready to start our day of fun. We had about three and a half hours here, so we tried to fit in as much as we possibly can in and out of the water. This is also a huge area and you can really spread out. There are tables to place your gear or you can leave it back on the boat. There are a couple of snorkeling areas sectioned off and a lifeguard is always keeping watch on the swimmers. There is a section for people that aren't confident swimmers and another one where you can snorkel off some larger areas. It was still a nice day, but the winds were higher, which made the water a little choppy, but still good enough to see the pretty blue water. And what you could see of the reef was still pretty amazing too. There are other specific areas for the divers. They will even teach you an intro to diving, which is an extra cost to the standard boat trip. Lycra suits do come in handy and should be worn in North Queensland, but less likely for stingers in the winter time anyway. However, through the winter, the waters will be about 22 degrees Celsius. You can also get life jackets and pool noodles to help with flotation and buoyancy, some fins and snorkels. Using these are included in the ticket price, but you can always bring your own. There are lots of fish that will hang out at the back of the boat too, which was great for the first timers. They'll also feed these guys later on when we're in the water snorkeling, so that's coming up soon. First up, we decided that we we're going to take a ride in the semi-submarine. These were an option at Green Island, but we had to pay extra, so it was great that it was included in this ticket price. This is a first in best dress scenario, so you just have to wait in line or come back later. You're literally walking into the sub and already underwater or below sea level.
These seats are for two people each and placed down as you're filling up the submarine. As you're moving along, you can clearly see the reef, which is a lot deeper than what we saw in the last video. You can definitely spot some larger fish, maybe even some turtles, which I did see one, but it was a little bit too quick for me and I didn't get the camera in on time. You're even listening to a live commentary from the driver the whole time, and they will point out things along the way that you may not notice. This is basically a 30 minute cruise nearby from the pontoon and a great option for those not wanting to get into the water. For me though, it does lack a little excitement and I do prefer to be in the water. So that's coming up. Next up was a quick visit to the underwater viewing area, which you can see any time of day. Basically, it's just a five minute walkthrough section and you can see what's around at the time. This is pretty much the same viewing as the semi-submarine, but you do have to wait for underwater creatures to come to you and be there watching at the right time. I don't know about you, but I much prefer the snorkeling in the water and that's just where we're heading next. You have a very large area to explore and it's marked out with floating buoys. But the lifeguard is always there keeping an eye out for you too. There is also one line you can hold on to as you're swimming along if that makes you feel more comfortable. The water was definitely so much deeper here than on our last snorkeling trip and a lot more area for the underwater creatures to hide. It was still pretty exciting and lots of fish around though, especially in coral that was closer to the water surface. Plenty of hard coral types too, like lettuce leaf coral, staghorn coral, grain coral, whip coral, plate coral, or even some soft corals. There was lots of parrotfish around, butterfly fish, angel fish, damsel fish, and even clownfish like Nemo. And don't forget the clams as well. You can even run into some turtles, which are always my favourite. Angoncourt Ribbon Reef is a pristine ecosystem and part of the Great Barrier Reef. It's one of the wonders of the world and the largest living entity stretching from North Queensland all the way to Bundaberg in the south. I do suggest eating lunch after the snorkeling as you don't want to be full while in the water. But know that the buffet lunch is only served until 1.30 p.m. So make sure you keep an eye on the time and get back to the boat before that ends. Look, can you see the shark? That's a white tip shark. Bit far away, unfortunately, but I still managed to spot him. This is what I mentioned before about the fish feeding off the snorkeling platform too. It was great to be in the water at that time. To all that snorkeling fun must come to an end and need to get out of the water eventually. It was time to get into some dry clothes and relax on the deck until the boat leaves. 
We watched on as the helicopter was taking people for rides, which you can organise on the boat ride out. We thought about it too, but it takes a huge chunk of time from experiencing everything else and you go, don't get a choice of when you're actually flying. So take that into consideration. This day trip from Port Douglas was almost twice the price as Green Island from Cairns, but we were travelling a lot further and in deeper water. You might want to take that into consideration when booking your Great Barrier Reef tours. I'll have the Green Island trip link below if you want to check that out, but click here now to see the Mossman River Drift snorkeling tour that was released last week. It also leaves from Port Douglas. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.